Ignace Dashinsky was a born Labour champion, an undisputed authority, and the leader of the Polish Socialist Party. In his youth, he was active in the oil fields of Borisław Drohovich, which is in modern-day Ukraine. At the time, this oil basin was the wild west of the eastern Austro-Hungarian Empire. Oil wells, big money, and great exploitation. Dashinsky went to those lands with a program for creating self-education and self-organization clubs for the laborers. He always defended their right to go on strike if necessary. He created party structures, trade unions, and knew well how to voice his opposition. For instance, in Krakow in 1905, during a demonstration showing solidarity with workers from the Russian partition of Poland, he publicly burned the Tsar's portrait in protest. Dashinsky supported the efforts of Poland to become the third pillar of the Habsburg monarchy, alongside Austria and Hungary. However, when the Central Powers were on the verge of defeat at the close of World War I, Dashinsky led the provisional government designed to replace the Regency Council governed at the pleasure of Germany and Austria. As an ardent socialist, Dashinsky could not find common ground with the Polish right. He would have eagerly nationalized all the factories in Poland. At the same time, he knew very well when to back down, which he did when it became clear that he did not represent the nation as a whole. But Dashinsky's leftism was also his great asset. In 1920, he became the deputy prime minister in the national defense government, with Vincente Vitas, the peasant leader, as prime minister. Dashinsky served as a lightning rod. When the Red Army was approaching, it was clear that the Polish government had to showcase its working class credentials. Dashinsky was the same age as Józef Piłsudski, the commander-in-chief from the time of the Polish-Bolshevik War and the actual leader of interwar Poland. For a time, the two men were personally and politically close, but Dashinsky sharply opposed Piłsudski when he and his people began to infringe on democratic procedures. He also blamed Piłsudski for the pact with the gentry and conservatives. Ignacy Dyszynski was elected to the Austro-Hungarian parliament and subsequently to the Polish parliament for 30 years successively. For two years, he even served as the speaker of the Polish Sejm, which is the lower house of the Polish parliament. But what he considered his greatest achievement was having founded the Society of Workers' Universities. In 1938, that society boasted some 12,500 learners in Poland and in France. I have the unfailing hope that their lives will become easier, that they will be strong and morally healthy, and that they will make their common ideals come true," Dashinsky said on his deathbed about the workers to whom he had devoted his own life.